Hey guys, so obviously you can tell feeling a lot better and I thought I'd just do a video to kind of walk you through what has made me come to this place considering the devastating news of um, the last cycle. Um, and I just thought that I would, because I went through a lot of emotions, which is really natural, natural as you guys know this process you undergo a lot of emotions a lot of feelings and I just needed time to process and most importantly to excuse me think about what I'm gonna do next and you know try to forward so the first thing I wanted to talk about my hands a little tight which is like kind of see me switching as I vlog you know, the first thing I really wanted to say, you know, one of the reasons why I feel so much better today, first is just having um, the few people that I can talk to. And you guys saw I talked to my dad and I talked to my husband and and I just wanted to process. Um, one of the most effective strategies that I feel has gotten me to do IVF as many times as I have, mini IVF, um, you know, going through all these cycles is I try to challenge myself to think of being an advocate for my future child um, the way my doctors advocate. So trying to really make myself minimize the emotion or give a specific time for the emotion that doesn't take away from my ability to plan, to figure out, and to research. Because when you're running against the clock, what I'm noticing that is really challenging for those of us who undergo a fertility challenges is that sometimes there isn't that much time to grieve when you're older than when you're younger. Because your body and your eggs are still undergoing meiosis as you're trying to figure things out, as you're trying to given to the emotion and being sad and taking day by day by day to process. And I know everybody's different and some people really need that time before they can move on. But I needed to look into myself and challenge myself. And the way that I did it was to tell myself, I'm going to be an advocate for my future child the way the doctors are. Um, I'm going to give myself time to grieve but that time is going to be limited for me because I have to keep thinking of my child first before my feelings. So that's where my strength comes from. It's like I know I'm, I'm, I have to do it in order, you know, because as type A as I am, I knew that that's, I needed to be in the headspace that the doctors were in because I need to figure out the next step. So that fortunately has worked for me. So fingers crossed, it still works for me. So I did have my grieving time, but it wasn't very long before I started like chartering the way forward. So that's one tip. Um, the second tip that worked for me is trying to challenge my thinking from I don't want to say negative, but a natural way of thinking, poor me, blaming God, and really thinking like the scientists in the IVF lab, looking at the report and seeing what are my eggs telling me? What, what are these results telling me? What is God using through the science to communicate to me? And I think that was the cause of my biggest challenge because... I, I know that I needed to decide if I wanted to continue. Um, I know that the eggs were telling me that um, they were trying their best and there was nothing that I could do. It was just, that's what the eggs were, the results that I got. They arrested. It's just what the gift that I got. So looking at that as a gift of information that I could use to think about what to do next, that relanguaging really helped me because then instead of like just tr blaming and being hateful I'm looking at everything as the universe just communicating a language to me 
And what was interesting is when I started thinking that way, a part of me even started saying, well, you know, this might be a gift. Um, this gift of having the most number of embryos at our worst cycle, because it's, it's a gambling game. You got to get to the right one. And I got the most eggs out of this one. And maybe the probability of getting to the right one, because I got a lot of these ones out and I was able to figure out that they were not working, maybe the probability of getting to will increase now because I got the most that my body could make. And as I think about moving forward, if I do decide to do it again, then those will probably be a part of that probability number because it's a numbers game. And f according to Dr. Yillian, my doctor who I'm working with, as you guys have seen in my videos, the probability for women my age is between 43 and 44 is one out of eight, one out of 10, um, the normal embryo rate. And not that it's a guarantee, but in my head, that is the probability that I'm leaning on that actually helped me make the decision to, yeah, guys, I've made a decision to try one more time. Um, so that was the second uh, tip that I wanted to share in case it helps somebody. Challenging yourself to think like the IVF lab for your clinic and having the emotion, but trying to understand. Um, and so, yeah. So I just thought I'd share that because I, I feel like if you are going to develop resiliency, we are in it to get our babies. And our doctors are our best friends because they are trying to always think about helping us. And sometimes we get lost in the emotions too long and it inhibits our ability to move on. And for me, I don't have that luxury. So actually understanding that through the research I've done, that I do have to selfishly put myself, put myself second and put my future baby first in my thinking as I do my best, because that's the only way that I will feel better. Whatever the results come, if I know in my heart that I put my child first and I put my emotion, that my emotions did not get in the way of me getting what I, I desire from my heart, you know, um, I know that I will have some peace with it. Because like I told you guys, my husband and I, we are going to build a family. Um, there are many ways to build a family. It's just that this obviously is the ideal way that we would like to. So the babies are going to be there. It is just what methodology are we going to use? So what do you guys think? Hopefully that helps someone. Um, you know, one of the good things is my doctor did tell me, even though we had that talk because I was able to put things aside and talk and go through the results. You know, he did say that it was age. He did also allude to the fact that I was strong and a lot of women would give up on trying to get to the viable embryo. And he thought that I exercised a lot of strength. And so I thought that that was pretty cool that he told me that he didn't have to, but he told me that. So yeah, guys, yeah, that's where I am. So right now, um, I'm kind of thinking, you know, about when to do the next step. Um, a piece of me is going to see how my body's feeling. If my body is feeling up to it, I'm going to do one more cycle this February. Um, because again, that's the thing with clicking time. Once I hit for the age of 44 to 45, the probability jumps to one in 20 in terms of the normal embryo rate. So as you can imagine now being 43 years old and, and, a, and, and, and three quarters, um, I only probably have um, four more months before that probability shift um, is going to be kind of like the gauge that I use. I need these measures to be able to make a decision. So it is still the younger month out of the months I have left. So that's why I have to move quickly. Yeah, so I'll keep you guys updated if I decide. And as always, I will keep you on this journey. Um, I wanted to document my journal so that it could motivate somebody else who might be in a position like mine. 
And I hope that you're learning and let me know your thoughts. Do you think emotions get in the way of our journey sometimes and we sit in the emotions as opposed to the strategizing like our doctors seem to be able to move on quickly? What is your experience? Let's talk about it in the comments below so that we can help one another. I know for sure through a lot that I see and that's what I learned and I loved about the fertility community because you can learn so much. I learned that, and I saw in people's journeys that when they got into the emotion, it became about the emotions. Too long is what I mean. Too long into the emotions that it took away from the action plan that was needed to work on the viability and the next step or whatever the situation was. It took time away from the strategizing and, um, and I saw that and, and I I'm so grateful that I saw that in a lot of people that because that was the trigger in my mind to be like, wow, you know, because eventually when you see that person getting back on board to strategizing, they ended up actually being successful. But the time they took to be in that emotion was was a lot. So, yeah. Hi, right, guys. So that's where I am. You can see that I'm smiling. So for me, it has worked. And even though that was a devastating cycle. Who knows what the future holds, guys? All right, I'm excited. All right, bye.